Hello Tiger fans, thanks for joining us for a new week of the Perry Thomas Show here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Matt Payton with you as we take a look back at Campbellsville's past weekend on the road at Williamsburg. We'll also look ahead just a bit with Cumberland University and Senior Day coming up on the 9th of November. We visit as always with the head coach of the Fighting Tigers, Perry Thomas. And coach, uh, road trip down to Williamsburg, top 10 team. You knew it was gonna be tough. Your guys go in and put up a, a nice fight in the second half, game got away late. And really a lot of the same stuff that we've talked about uh, all year long. I think that's just the book at this point, like you mentioned in the post game. Yeah, I mean, it, it, we are who we are. And uh, it's really unfortunate. You know, we play against, I guess they're the seventh ranked team in the country this week. And, uh, we go down and we come out and compete with them for a long time. And, and then, you know, those things that we've, mistakes we've made throughout the season kind of caught up with us. And, and then they're a very good football team. So uh, they're able to take advantage and also force some of those things. But, you know, I'm proud of our guys from the standpoint that we come to play every week. We don't quit. Uh, they're not stupid. They're used to winning. They understand that we're not putting the team on the field that we've, used to putting on the field and and that this has been a down year and it's easy for them to fold their tents but these guys refuse to do it and you know we came out and I thought we took it to the team for a long time. Final score of that ball game was 47 to 10 between the Tigers and Patriots and a score really that probably wasn't indicative of the entire right. game. A couple of late scores off a uh, turnover and and uh, what amounted to basically an onside kick. Uh, here you can see some of the numbers if you're following along on television. Tyler Sophia with a buck 78 through the air. He did have an interception. Blake Baker, six touches, 67 yards, including a touchdown run for Baker. Darius Moore, steady as ever. 12 tackles, a sack, two mm -hmm. for loss there for Darius Moore as he continues to shine in his senior campaign. One of the, the few bright spots uh, yeah. for the Tigers, especially there on defense. And Coach, uh, I touched on it a little bit. That game kind of got away late. Uh, we'll talk about a few of the of the specific plays and, and, and things in there, but uh, late in the game, third, fourth quarter, there was a turnover. There was uh, a little pooch kick that you guys didn't get on. It gave them two short fields. Mm -hmm. They put up two quick touchdowns and kind of extended that thing. Right. It had the feel of, of maybe a, a game that belonged in the 35-17 mm -hmm. range or so. Ended up being a little more lopsided due to a few plays. Yeah, I thought so also. I thought that, you know, it was about a 35 to 17 type of game um, at the end, which we've done it before and teams have done it against us before. Things kind of got away. You know, I thought we got a little worn down. They put some fresh legs in and, and those guys, you know, hadn't been in there pounding the whole game. So they're a little fresher and we had some turnovers and things. And, you know, they had some short fields. But... You know, I thought it was uh, I thought it was a competitive game for a long time. Um, I thought our guys, you know, we, we gave up some big plays on defense uncharacteristically early on, on easy stuff. You know, we've given up big plays before, but a couple of those plays were just real simple pass plays that we bit on and uh, got a little out of position on. And we gave, you know, one of the receivers just had a career night against us on, on simple stuff, but it happens. You know, it happens against a very good football team that happens, but I thought our guys bounced back. You know, we got a big fumble in that, um, I guess it's the first half mm -hmm. and, and had a chance to make the score 13 to 10. And uh, we fumbled it back to them and they wound up scoring on the drive and, you know, Probably that's a big change. You know, we call that the sudden change right there, and that's the big change in the game right there. Yeah, that was the, the play that really kind of shifted things, and you never know how it's going to play out. Right. But you would have loved to see, mm -hmm. you know, seen that result if you guys were able to punch that in. You got a sack. I think maybe Darius Moore or, or Kenneth Satcher, somebody, Grover Russell, got in there right. defensive line, uh, got a hit, picked up the fumble. Looked like Anthony Sams had himself a scoop and score. He just couldn't mm -hmm. quite pick it up. I think Darius Harper may have. On. So you get the ball to three, and this is a situation that you've put yourselves in all year. The right. offense has made that mistake in the, at the 10, the 15. Finally, Finally. defense gets <laughs> one. We're going to get yeah. the easy score, and it wasn't meant to be. Tala Sophia, you get to a third down. Tala Sophia tries to kind of stick the nose of the football over. For what it's worth, basketball coach Brent Vernon, who will join us later, he was there. Yeah. He said he had the view right down the goal line. He said there's no doubt the ball crossed. Yeah. Uh, for whatever reason, it wasn't called a touchdown. Mm -hmm. They knock it out of his hands, run it back to midfield. Two plays later, they're in the end zone. So instead of it being 13 to 10, it's 20 to three. And talk about letting the wind out of the sails. Yeah, no doubt. And, and look, they were going to beat us no matter what, but that's huge right there. Uh, if nothing else for confidence and so forth. And like you said, all year long, we've been giving teams the ball in that situation. And defenses had to go, go out there and try to hold them to a field goal. Uh, we finally got that opportunity. We ran a play. 
and we're third and you know two feet mm -hmm. feet from the goal line or, or first and I mean second and two feet and so I'm telling Rick the coordinator coach Garris to run quarterback sneak three times yeah. in a row big six four six five quarterback the strongs and outs surely we can get over that line and you know he he, he reaches over he probably should just knife down like he always does but he tried to reach over and we felt like he had scored but the ball's knocked loose the official said that he didn't see it and you know they could return it back to midfield and before you know it a 13 to 10 game you know goes to 20 to 3 and now you're playing catch up again and from the standpoint of the players you know their thought process is man we can't get a break everything continues to go against us and that's where we have to be mentally strong, mentally tough, and understand that we got to make our own breaks. We get those opportunities, that's on us. We got to make our own breaks. And the Tigers uh, certainly would, would like a few of those to, to go their way. I guess glass half full, maybe you say uh, you're saving some of those up, Coach, mm -hmm. and you're going to use them these last few weeks. But uh, uh, back to that Cumberland's game quickly as we put a bow on that. That's a Cumberland's team that we mentioned in the top ten. You could see the talent that they had yeah. on the field that night. They've got a quarterback in Josiah Robbins. It's a team that uh, Coach Reimer has put in position to make a run, mm -hmm. and uh, they will see Lindsey Wilson down the line. That game will have a lot of importance. Mm -hmm. It's hard to see two of those guys getting beat uh, at this point. Lindsey's yeah. off this week, so you're not going to see two losses. So whatever happens, if that game at the end of the year is probably going to hold a tiebreaker and decide the the, uh, the division. Right. You saw Lindsey earlier in the year. Now you've seen Cumberland's. Maybe your thoughts just on those two teams uh, overall. Well, it's hard to compare them because Lindsey was the first game of the year, and um, you know Cumberland's is game eight, I guess. So it's really hard to compare them. Uh, Lindsey's made drastic improvement mm -hmm. as the season's gone on. We're seeing Cumberland's probably at peak time of the year for them, so it's hard to compare the two. I just know it will come down to a tough game, and and you know both other teams will probably make it in. I think Lindsey's number six in the country, Cumberland's number seven. Uh, so guarding them losing another game, you know, if they just have that one loss against each other, then uh, both of them will make it into playoffs, and both of them could make a great run and. Uh, you know, this is a strong league. You look at Georgetown and U Pike, and those teams have a chance to battle with people and come to university. Mm -hmm. uh, but those two have kind of stood out front and, and taken the leadership role this season. And um, I think both of them are really sound good teams. They're very good teams, both ranked uh, mm -hmm. inside the top 10. Of course, we'll step away, uh, come back. We'll take a look around the Mid South Conference this past week. We'll also look at this week's upcoming schedule as well. Stay with us here on the Perry Thomas Show. solace at Saloma Baptist, an intergenerational church. Here, the family of Christ extends far past the walls, and hospitality is held on high. We are committed in our pursuit of discipling every nation and generation. For more information on service times, visit SalomaBaptist.com or call 270-789-0082 and add our Facebook at Saloma Baptist Church. Saloma Baptist, ministering to the community and to the world in the 21st century. A champion doesn't get days off. It takes determination and drive to realize goals. From long nights to early mornings. From the courts to the classrooms to online. At Campbellsville University, this is why we play. This is how we learn. This is where champions are made. Find your calling for a life change at campbellsville.edu. Citizens Bank and Trust Company serves the Taylor County area with three convenient locations. Our online and mobile options can make your banking experience even easier. With features such as digital wallet, touch ID login with our mobile app, and online deposit. Mobile banking also gives you the online control of your Citizens Bank debit card. Along with our banking locations, we also offer a no charge ATM and the student commons on the campus of Campbellsville University. Citizens Bank and Trust in Campbellsville. Member FDIC, Equal Housing Lender. Welcome back to the Perry Thomas Show here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Matt Payton with you as we visit with the head coach of Fighting Tiger Football again this week. Perry Thomas and the Tigers have a bye week. Coach, uh, those bye weeks, you get those sprinkled in sporadically. Mm -hmm. This supposed to be the week that you would have taken on a Lindsey Wilson College. Mm -hmm. uh, you and the Blue Raiders both 
off this week and here you are late in the in the season and kind of open some things up you get your coaches out you get some more time to work with your guys uh, not a terrible time to, to have one of these bye weeks come your way no it's not actually i mean one of the reasons we did that was to give us both a break late in the season uh this division alone is tough so every week you have to not only be physically strong but you have to be mentally strong but also uh you know, even when you're out of division, the games are tough. So it's, it's, it's a great timing for us. You know, a couple of guys banged up, so they'll get to rest up a little bit. Uh, we're going three days this week, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday mornings early, so our coaches can get out in the afternoon and actually go watch practices. Most of the time, you know, you go to games or you go to school to visit. Practices are the best things because you can just see a really you know, how a young man works, his character and everything in practice and his work habits. and. You, if you need to see them throw a little extra or do something, run a route extra, coaches will work with you. So coaches out certain places this week, uh, visiting those places. And, you know, it gives us a chance to focus on us a little bit, but also on our future and our recruiting. Uh, we only got a couple of games left, so it's important that we really hit the ground running on recruiting and, and try to find some uh, corrections, uh, you know, to get us back where we like to be. You know, we, none of us like to be in this situation and get our program back to that respectable level that we're accustomed to. Let's take a look back before we uh, move forward with this week's schedule in the Mid-South Conference. Let's take a look back uh, at some of the games from last week, starting in the Bluegrass Division, uh, Campbellsville on the road to Cumberland's this past weekend, 47 to 10. The score of that one, we kind of work our way down through Georgetown at Thomas Moore. That was a close one, Coach, 20 mm -hmm. to 19. Cumberland, Tennessee scored 21 unanswered to knock off Bethel. They were down 10 to nothing. Cumberland's uh, Phoenix, uh, Cumberland Phoenix come back to win that one, 21 to 10. And then Lindsey Wilson College gets a big victory over Pikeville. Coach mentioned uh, they were playing really well and yeah. different things. And, and Coach, that score, 45-10 over a, a Pikeville team that, that looked uh, you know fairly impressive. Yeah. Obviously a quality team uh, when we saw them a few weeks ago. So that, that score really jumps off there. Yeah, it's an impressive victory. You know, I think Pikeville's one of the most talented teams in the, in, in the Mid-South. You know, in all the divisions, I think they're very talented, and uh, for Lindsey to handle them like that is a, is a very good statement for them, very big statement. You know, it looks like they're playing really good football right now. And then uh, Cumberland, Tennessee's nice win over Bethel. You know, 21 straight points, and Cumberland was actually in the top 25 team early in the season, so they're a really solid football team also. And then uh, some other scores around the Mid-South Conference, I guess, uh, from this next page, the most significant score that you'll see is probably that Reinhardt and St. Andrew score, 48 to 28. Uh, St. Andrew and Reinhardt both meeting 3-0 and in the app mm -hmm. division, so Reinhardt takes control with that win, 48-28 there. Kaiser over Weber, 48-7. to Bluefield gets a big comeback win, Coach. They were down, I think, 41-29, yeah. late third comeback, mm -hmm. knockoff. KCU 57-54 and then Southeastern knocks off Warner a big score there for the flame or for the fire excuse me mm -hmm. 66 to 14. Yeah and it looks like you know with uh, Reinhardt's win they're going to win the Appalachian and and make another run in the playoffs and, and Kaiser uh, which is in the top 20 this mm -hmm. year uh, will be able to you know sneak in there and get into the playoffs and, and Kaiser as the team we open with next year down at their place uh, they're playing really good football right now. It seems like a lot of teams are off this week as we take a look at some of the uh, the the games taking place this upcoming week we mentioned the Tigers of course off Lindsey Wilson off as well in the Bluegrass mm -hmm. Division this was the week you can see the only two teams missing there this was the week that they were supposed to play prior to to moving that game to the beginning of the year. Uh, Cumberland's takes on Georgetown that's on the road Thomas Moore at Bethel and then Pikeville down at Cumberland, Tennessee uh, and some of those games. And I guess, Coach, uh, just for obvious reasons, that Cumberland's Georgetown game, mm -hmm. uh, the one that, that people will kind of be watching this week, uh, yeah. you know, that trap game area on the road well, to Cumberland's and different things. And, and, you know, Georgetown's capable of beating them. Mm -hmm. You know, Georgetown plays a style that they can compete with them. And if they can guard against the big play and the turnovers, they'll have a shot and it's a rivalry game that's, uh, you know, for a long time, they were competing for the conference title in this, you know, in the uh, Mid-South, uh, back when we used to have the East-West type of division. So it yeah, wouldn't be surprised they don't, you know, pull a tight one out right there. And then I think the u pike Cumberland game's interesting. You'll see two very talented teams right there. Uh, nothing to lose, and we'll see, you know, see who comes out on top of that one. Yeah, a lot of jockeying for next year and some of these other games mm -hmm. as uh, the dominoes have really started to fall, and you can see these division winners take shape and different things. Some of the other games from around the Mid-South Conference uh, this coming weekend as, uh, as you take a look ahead, 
uh, outside of the Bluegrass Division, Cincinnati Christian at Reinhardt Point and KCU, Faulkner, Ave Maria, Weber, Southeastern. And Coach, we'll just touch on it here. Uh, CCU and Reinhardt uh, news coming down yesterday or, or Monday that uh, CCU, Cincinnati Christian, would be closing its doors. And uh, you wonder if maybe there's a rallying cry there as they yeah. go down to Reinhardt and, and see if they could pick up a big one there on the road. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, it's unfortunate that those young men have to go through that and, and not just the football program, but all the student body there. Uh, you have students that have been there three years, four years now, and, and, and you know, they're, uh, they got to find out what they're going to do with their future holds as far as graduation mm -hmm. and other things. So uh, you never know, you know, this could be an opportunity for CCU to go down there and just throw all caution to win and go in and have a big rally and get a pull, pull mm -hmm. a big upset. Uh, but it's unfortunate that situation, you know, we've seen it before with St. Catharines down the road in Lambeth and, you know, fortunately um, under the leadership of Dr. Carter and the trustees and so forth, you know, we're not in a situation like that. And we've got to feel blessed on that, that we're in a situation where uh, we're strong, we're a strong university and, and um, you know, we have great leadership and the future looks bright for us, but it's so it's very unfortunate for those guys. You have a, a lot of student athletes, as coach mentioned, that will be trying to, to move on and this mm -hmm. is happening right in the middle of the year. So trying to figure out mm -hmm. how that impacts eligibility. If a guy has played one basketball game, there was right. a lot of stuff going on social media last night, keeping up with that, uh, you know, pretty sad situation uh, to say the least. And we certainly wish everyone involved the very best. And coach, one last thing before we uh, uh, let you go this week. Last, uh, this weekend, uh, or this week we had the fall festival yeah. with Halloween and everything going on. Another terrific job by the athletics department here at mm -hmm. Campbellsville University. The tennis courts were, were packed. Right. Uh, a ton of kids out and uh, a lot of smiling faces and uh, some, some cowboy football players I yeah, think last night. Yeah. Uh, the guys well. actually look natural. <laughs> you know, they, 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 their thing was cowboys and, and they actually look natural. I mean, they really did. And they look good in their, uh, in their outfits and their costumes. And, you know, like I say, tell people all the time, I think the student athletes have more fun at that than anyone. You know, I'm sure some of them dread it, having to give up a night, uh, maybe give up a practice or something, or having to go early in the morning so you can do it at night. And, and I'm sure they dread it if they've never done it before. But once it starts and you see the delight on those youngsters, youngsters that come through there, um, I think our student athletes have a ball with it. Mm -hmm. And I'll be honest with you, I think that for some of them, it's probably the second, uh, talking about the kids that come through, probably the second biggest day of the year for them mm -hmm. next to Christmas. You know, is to come to this fall festival. Mm -hmm. It's a safe environment. Coach Hardy, our athletic director, started this thing seven years ago, and he's just done a tremendous job of uh, putting it together. And now, you know, Amazon helped sponsor it, and everyone's bought in. Yep. Everyone's bought in. Everyone sees the benefit. Everyone bought is bought in, and I just think it's a grand event for everyone involved and for this community. And if you haven't been able to make it out, uh, please do so in the next year or so mm -hmm. as those continue here at Campbellsville University. Check out some of those photos and, and look at some of those faces, as Coach mentioned, not just uh, the little ones that are mm -hmm. coming to attend, but, but those student athletes that get to have a good time uh, uh, with some of the children in this community as well. Uh, pretty neat to see. Uh, special thanks to Coach for joining us this week. We'll let him go. We'll bring in Brent Vernon, uh, head coach of the Tiger basketball team. He'll pick up a segment here on the Perry Thomas Show as the Tigers open their season uh, this past weekend as well. We'll bring Coach back next week as the Tigers get ready for Senior Day. It's a matchup with the Cumberland Phoenix here at Finley Stadium. Don't go anywhere. This is the Perry Thomas Show. Central Kentucky's newest music venue is right around the corner. Located in Somersville, Kentucky, Greener Alive is bringing you the artists you love in their new 1,000-seat venue. Shows every Saturday night featuring the Heart of Kentucky band, Greener Alive's very own house band, made up of current and former touring musicians. Drop by the GRL Grill or our indoor concession area and pick up your very own Greener Alive merchandise. Greener Alive, on the web at greeneralive.com. I'm Dr. Dwayne Norman, Senior Pastor of Campbellsville Baptist Church. You are invited to experience a caring community where the Word of God is taught and Christ is honored. We invest in the future of our children and youth by providing environments where they are loved, discipled, and taught the Bible, as well as our college ministry, which partners with students and faculty at Campbellsville University. 
Sunday school begins at 915, worship at 1030. Come join us. Welcome back to the Perry Thomas Show here on the Campbellsville University Sports Network. Matt Payton with you now as we transition, turn our attention to the Tiger basketball team. The Tigers opening up this past Friday. They get a win over Ohio State University Mansfield. And the head coach, Brent Vernon, joins us now. Coach, it's been, uh, been a while. It's nice to, I know you guys have been working on this thing since the whistle blew in Kansas City uh, last spring. But uh, a long summer, you're yeah. working on the recruiting, getting everybody in. Here you are now, late October, and, and the ball's up in the air. Yeah, and it seems like it gets started quicker and quicker every year. Uh, you make and, that you know, schedule. Now. I know. <laughs> Whenever we uh, had that game on October 25th, it was one of those we weren't ready. Uh, fortunately, it wasn't a one of you say a heavyweight opponent, so right. we, it was it was good for us just to get a game under our belt and, and give us a little bit more time now heading into what I would consider is from here on out the meat of the schedule uh, prior to conference. So, a uh, good start, but. It's been a uh, a long journey, and it's back to the grind. And you know, sights are still set for the same thing of having a good year, competing for a conference, and, and make it out to Kansas City. Now let's take a look at the the numbers from that matchup with Ohio State University Mansfield. The Tigers pull off a big win, one seventeen to thirty three. The final score in that victory on Friday. Justin Tucker, there you can see the guy. Uh, it's a lot of energy from Justin Tucker. Seven of nine from the floor, 16 points, and I'm guessing he played less than 20 minutes. Coach Tavion Mason, eight of eight from the floor, 17 points. DeAndre Singleton, seven of 10, 14 points for the, the big transfer out of Georgia. And all three of those guys, new names, new faces for this Tiger program. A lot of uh, additions to this program this year, and those are three dudes that you're gonna count on a lot. We're gonna count on a, a big piece of them. That I think all of our new guys are gonna play a big piece. The beauty about the first game, we had 14 of our 15 guys dressed, everybody played. Only one guy played over 20 minutes, so everybody was playing, honestly, just anywhere from 12 to 16 minutes. And uh, we ended the game with our five youngest guys. We had four, three freshmen, and I think two sophomores mm -hmm. on the floor for the most part, maybe even uh, four freshmen. Uh, you know, it's hard to even it keep up together. with it all. I, you know, it all does run together. But those guys finished out strong, and. Uh, I think all of our new guys, the hardest part is trying to figure out a new system and what us as a coaching staff wants. But as the year progresses, I think you'll see glimpses of, of uh, some really big capabilities from every one of them. Uh, a lot of guys capable of scoring and helping us in different ways. And I think you've seen, you know, Justin did a nice job the other night. Big Dre was very good and is continuing to get better. T. Avey was efficient. Uh, can be someone I think who can be special as his two years uh, roll on. So as we continue to progress and practice, I think we'll see very bright spots from a whole lot of guys this year. And you had to replace three very important pieces, your three leading scorer and uh, Hagen Tyler, Stephon Adams, Andrew Smith. That's not easy to do, and, and you did it. Uh, this year you were able to get that depth, uh, maybe a little more quantity over yeah. quality, not to say that those guys aren't capable of putting up big numbers, but uh, you were able to bring in some guys in that backcourt in terms of uh, T. Avion Mason and, and Richie Mitchell. And then you look at the front court with Austin Davis and Justin Tucker, Lenoris Mincy, uh, Singleton. I mean, you go on and on, you, you brought in a lot of guys to try to help split that up a little bit. Nobody really carrying the load every night. No, you know, we were, I think we're the only team maybe last year, I think we had three first team all-conference guys. Uh, and, and all three guys were around 17 plus. Mm -hmm. You're not going to replace what you lost with three more guys. I, I believe what we did, we, we replaced them with a bunch of guys who can do a bunch of different things, and they're all gonna be able to do it, and it's gonna have to be a collective group effort. It, it's, it's been something we've tried to progress and get to. Our depth hasn't been what I wanted it to the last couple of years. On paper, I love where our depth is right now. You know, We're gonna play 10, 11 guys, but what I think that the biggest thing comes from our depth is we can have the practices where we can compete for longer periods of time in practice as the year goes on to where guys are still fighting for spots where the last couple years because of our depth, we haven't been able to go as much as I've wanted. We've maybe had to scale back. And now I think guys are always gonna be fighting for positions. I think you'll see different of these new guys as well as returners step up at different times throughout the year. You know, right now you could sit there and say that uh, Austin Davis, Justin Tucker, Lenoris Mincy, David Simmons, T. Avey, they're all right there in the mix of stuff. Richie is really making some big strides in the last week. He's had some injuries. He's trying to figure out exactly what we're wanting him to do. And I think he's with somebody as the year goes on, he's gonna get better and better. And, and I just, I, I see really good things happening. 
as long as all of our guys can truly buy into what we want to do. And that's not even really mentioning Jacob King, Sam Whining, Ronald Taylor, those guys uh, who were returners. And you touched on that depth. Each of the last two years, you've been bringing up guys from uh, the JV to kind of help you fill those rosters. So if that happens this year, it means a ton of injuries or things have happened, but uh, certainly something that you shouldn't have to deal with. Yeah, I don't think we will. And, you know, we do have two of our young JV guys up there, but and it's something that they've earned. You know, we brought Nolan Barrel back. Uh, he did a great job for our team last year. And, He's actually had a great summer and has picked up right where he left off. And Seth Stockton's coming in and practice with us and gives us another body, a guy who works hard. But th those new guys are really, if they will pay attention and continue to learn from our returners, you know, Sam had had a great summer and did a, has done a wonderful job coming back better and more ready. Jacob is Jacob. He, he's just that steady guy in there, that presence we need and continue to shoot. And then Ronald, you know, if he can get over some of these knacks, you know, he's always banged up a little bit. And, and if he can ever get to where he's 100%, people will see the real Ronald Taylor, the guy who was our best defender last year and somebody who once he was healthy, we couldn't have off, off the floor. He had to be there for us. So, you know, I think you, we've got a lot of different ways we can play a lot of different lineups we can throw out and it's exciting to see as we get closer to the year. Yeah, and as we move uh, along throughout the year, once we transition to Inside CU Sports, you'll hear much more about Max Reyes and Devontae Robinson, a couple of highly touted freshmen for this Tiger team uh, that we have not mentioned yet. But this weekend, you've got a matchup with Lindenwood Belleville. You went there last year. They'll return the favor this year and come here on Saturday afternoon. Uh, your thoughts on that matchup there Saturday? Yeah, well, it's hard to tell right now. Don't know tons about them. We actually uh, just got the roster yesterday. They open up Wednesday tonight, you know, and, and it'll be interesting to see return a lot of players, guys that were young last year and, and played quite a bit of minutes. Numbers won't just stand out and be like, oh, you know, but now they're a year older. Uh, the one thing it could be in an advantage, you never know, new coach this year. So you have a new system, makes it even harder for, to prepare for. But at, during this time of year, I, I'm one, I, I firmly believe We'll look at our opponents and we'll try to get some information, but I'm not really worried about them. I'm worried about us to make sure that we're playing as hard as we can, making sure that the things that we're drilling in practice we're carrying over to game. And, and those are the things that I, I believe is what's gonna earn you playing time. And if we can continue to make the progress we made the last two weeks, you'll, you'll see some very bright spots. And I think Saturday will be a, another bright spot for us. And before we let you go, I know Saturday you were in Williamsburg. Uh, you were at the football game. You were sending me texts here and there. Congratulations to your dad at the floor uh, at Cumberland's at the O. Wayne Rollins Center, named after him, Randy Vernon Court, uh, yeah. I guess now. Yeah. So that's pretty cool stuff as well. It is. Uh, it was a great honor for him and, and for our family. Spent so many years there. Uh, very appreciative of Cumberland for what they've done for our family. And, and they did it really nice for him on a homecoming weekend. He had a lot of uh, former players come back and be there. And, you know, it's uh, just going to make it a – Another interesting thing when we play there, coaching on that court, but something I always look forward to and, and go there and you know hopefully get a few wins this year. you got a few months to prepare for. Yeah, for sure. Thanks, sir. Good luck Thank on Saturday. You. The Tigers on Saturday taking on Lindenwood Belleville. That's a 1 p.m. tip-off time uh, in the Powell Athletic Center. Uh, you can tune in through the CampbellsvilleTigers.com watch portal. Brett Tadella will have the coverage for you. Thanks to Brent Vernon for joining us, as well as the head coach of Tiger football, Perry Thomas, here. We'll see you next time on the Perry Thomas Show. A champion doesn't get days off. It takes determination and drive to realize goals. From long nights to early mornings, from the courts to the classrooms to online. At Campbellsville University, this is why we play. This is how we learn. This is where champions are made. Find your calling for a life change at campbellsville.edu. Central Kentucky's newest music venue is right around the corner. Located in Summersville, Kentucky, Greener Alive is bringing you the artists you love in their new 1,000-seat venue. Shows every Saturday night featuring the Heart of Kentucky band, Greener Alive's very own house band, made up of current and former touring musicians. Drop by the GRL Grill or our indoor concession area and pick up your very own Greener Alive merchandise. Greener Alive, on the web at greenerelive.com. 
Take a look at Campbellsville University's campus with us right here on WLCU-TV, Campbellsville, Comcast Channel 10, and Digital Channel 15.